Okay, Robert Monson canceled from his own ministry. <laughs> His ministry has his name, but they cursed him. They cursed him. They're not playing. <laughs> They're not playing, okay? Because this is what happens, right? Uh, well, we will talk more when we, we get to uh, Catherine Creek. So whenever people, it's always sound doctrine with sound living, right? Like people who are compromised in their doctrine, sooner or later they're going to compromise in their living, Okay. So, because how you live as a minister of the gospel should reflect what you teach. So, if you're teaching a compromised theology, you are going to find that your life somewhere is also what is also compromised. So, clearly, a, uh, a clear example with uh, Robert Morris, Robert Morris over here. So, let's take a look to what has transpired uh, within the ministry of uh, Robert Morris, okay? They've put out a statement. So here's the statement, guys. Here we go. Robert Morris is gone from his own ministries. They have canceled him. My husband always says, like, you know what? I think when you have uh, a ministry, it's not good for you to use your name. Not that there's anything wrong with that issue. Okay, that's just his opinion, which he, over time I've tend to agree. Like, not to have your name to it. Because if something happens to you, it is going to affect your ministry. Case example is this Ravi Zacharias, right? All his ministry was Ravi Zacharias' ministry. So he's done for everything else. You just don't want to have anything to do with his ministry. But if let's just say he had like a different name, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Faith ministries. You know what I mean? So even if he falls, some people will be like in Japan, in Africa. They don't know. It will just be like faith ministries. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, so I thought that was uh, a good point that my honey always brings up. Like, ah, don't use your name. Don't use your name. But, you know, it's there's nothing wrong if people use their name. I was just sharing that with you. Dear Ministry Family, on Tuesday, June 18, Gateway Church accepted the resignation of Robert Morris. He has stepped away from leading the church and all related ministries, including Pastor Robert Morris Ministries. The elders of Gateway Church learned that Pastor Robert Morrow Ferrier, more than 40 years ago, involved a minor. We are heartbroken and grief-stricken for this woman who has carried this burden of abuse for decades. Pastor Robert's sin and his lack of transparency to the church elders and leadership has disqualified him from continuing his role as a senior pastor at Gateway Church and as a leader of Pastor Robert Morris Ministries. As a result, all future radio and television broadcast ministry from Pastor Robert Morris Ministries has been cancelled. I repeat, has been cancelled. We are grateful for how God has used Gateway Church and Pastor Robert Morris Ministries to minister to so many people around the world for decades. Countless people have come to Christ grown in their faith and been ministered to in their time of need. We are truly humbled by what God has done through these ministries. We know God is on his throne, even when it seems that everything around us is shaking. He is our firm foundation. We know he loves and cares for every one of you. And we encourage you to continue looking to him and as the source of hope and strength. Our prayer for you who have watched our television programs, listened to worship and the word of radio and supported this ministry with your prayers and gifts can be found in scripture. Numbers 624 to 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace. Blessings, Pastor Robert Morris, ministry staff. Just like that, the ministry staff of Pastor Robert Morris has canceled its, its leader, Robert Morris, because of his moral failure, which he did not disclose fully, but lied to. So all these things shouldn't have happened if Pastor Morris was not adorning the pulpit for all these years. Oh, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. All right, guys, so guess what? Robert Morris did not get severance pay after resignation over abuse scandal at Gateway Church. 
reveals. So this is another article that we're going to take a look right about now. Gateway Church founder Robert Morris received no severance payout after he resigned from the Texas mega church in the wake of allegations that he dash abused Cindy Kremisha over mad boys in the 1980s, beginning when she was 12. Responding to questions from the Christian Post regarding the terms of Morris, Regarding the terms of Morris' exit from the church on June 18, Lawrence Swissgard, executive director of Gateway Media, testly told the Christian Post, quote unquote, no. When asked if the mega church founder had received any kind of severance package, it was unclear Friday how much Morris, who is worth an estimated $117 million, was paid, was being paid by Gateway Church prior to his resignation. The Internal Revenue Service only requires that churches report income from unrelated trade or business. A look at Morris's earnings associated with income generated from his preaching and teaching with Robert Morris Evangelistic Association shows him progressing from being paid 15000 plus an additional 25 plus in allowances in 2003 to as high as 350000 annually in the last decade of the church's operation. According to IRS 990 firings by the Robert Morris Evangelistic Association, in 2022, the ministry paid him 200000 for 15 hours of work weekly. Guys, how is somebody in ministry making 200000 thousand for 15 hours come on now this is two days work okay <laughs> oh boy but i continue in 2021 he worked the same number of hours but but was only paid hundred thousand in 2020 records show he was paid two hundred thousand in 2019, Morris' executive composition from the ministry was 300,000. In 2018 and 2017, Morris was paid 350,000. In 2016 and 2015, he was paid 250,000. In 2014, he was paid 300,000. In 2013, he reported 310,108 in composition from the ministry. In 2012, he reported 120 plus, and in 2011, he reported 131 plus. I know a worker is worth his wages, a labor is worth his wages, but this is outrageous. This is outrageous. That's what happens. They turn this into an operation, a business operation, and when Cindy was asking for two. Uh, for two million in composition, this guy offered her fifty thousand dollars, and look how much money that he was making. Mm -hmm. While in two thousand and five, Morris reported zero in composition from the ministry, he received ninety three plus in expense account and other allowances. He reported the same in two thousand and six and two thousand seven for fifteen hours of work weekly. Oh my goodness. In 2008, he reported 20,500 in compensation plus 93 plus in expense account and other allowances. In 2009, he reported 29 plus in compensation plus 93,000 in expense account and other allowances. In 2010, he reported 97,000 in compensation plus 93 plus in expense account and allowances. On Wednesday, the Board of Elders of Gateway Church and the overseers of the Pastor Robert Morris Ministry said in a joint statement posted on the Robert Morris Ministry's homepage that all future radio and television broadcasts from Morris had been cancelled. Pastor Robert's sin and his lack of transparency to the church's elders and leadership has disqualified him from continuing in his role as senior pastor at Gateway Church. And as a leader of Pastor Robert Morris Ministries, 
As a result of future radio and television broadcast ministry from Pastor Robert Morris Ministries has been cancelled, the ministry leaders stay said in their statement. This guy was making money and this is extravagant. I'm all for pastors and elders to be getting paid, but this, this, 15 hours work week and the person is making what? Come on now. This is, this is, this is supposed to be money for the ministry, right? When people give in their tithes and their offering. Uh, but they're going out there to pay $200,000 for 15 hours of work. Help me out here, please. Help me out here, please. But we continue. Okay, so to be quite honest, to me, all right, fine. They've refused to give him his severance pay. However, isn't he, he, isn't he not entitled to that money? Because he already did the work that he was supposed to earn that money. He resigned. He wasn't fired. When you resign, they're supposed to pay you that type of money. Okay? He did not, uh, he wasn't, uh, he didn't get fired. Now, I'm um, zero fan of everything that happened. However, we shouldn't, just because he did whatever he did, that doesn't mean that we should punish him unjustly. He wasn't found in a court of law that what he did uh, was a crime. According to the church elders and everybody, they felt like they were lied to. And now they have uh, lawyers who are investigating. They haven't come out with their investigation. Okay. So for them to refuse to give him his severance pay, do you guys honestly think that is uh, that is biblical? I get it, like vertical. I mean, horizontal would be like, yes, he get what de he deserve. He shouldn't get paid. But is that a just situation for him? Okay, we do not condone everything, whatever else he did. But we cannot. Uh, vengeance belongs to God. He will repay. Okay, even if you're working, right? You might get fired. Let's say you work from Monday through Friday. You get fired on Friday. Your company is still going to pay you the work that you did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They are supposed to pay you. So in Morris's situation, I do honestly, I think they should just pay him because there's no point for them not to pay him unless that is um, according to the to uh, to the church bylaws that if somebody has done something like that, then you don't get paid, then that's fine. They'll be acting according to their bylaws. But if they're just overreacting, reacting that, okay, they were lied to. Tony, I mean, uh, Robert Morris did this. As a result, they don't want to pay him. They are creating new things after the fact. I do think that is wrong. Now they can set up a precedent moving forward, but they cannot... Uh, retroactively punish him okay because right now we know the statute of limitation passed uh in texas as well as in oklahoma so legally even the state cannot bring a charge against robert morris so if the state cannot bring a charge against robert morris why is the church even going beyond what even pagans wouldn't even do is my question so for me i'm like no you know yes he definitely get paid uh to me i think they they paid him way too much money. A labor is worth his wages, but I think this was way extravagant. But be that as it may, this is what was agreed according to their church, right? Plus, hey, let's be honest, that is his church. You know, he operates it as a CEO. He's overseeing over 100,000 people. So, hey, man, he's getting 200,000 a week, right? <laughs> Times two. <laughs> Times two amount uh, the number of the congregation that he does oversee. But what do you guys think, okay, biblically speaking, is this a just thing for the church to do, not to give him his severance pay? So now I know right now he's been uh, radio silence. Obviously, he's not looking. Because to me, I'm like, okay, if he's entitled to this, um, I mean, if he gets good lawyers, he can sue the church. And they can end up even paying him more than what they're supposed to be paying him right now. So, but I'm interested to know what you guys think about this whole thing. But we continue.
his elders. Elder said that although they are abused or card many years before Gedwa was established, they are committed to finding the truth. Regrettably, prior to Friday, June 14, the current elders did not have all the facts, the statement said. The statement said the elders have retained law firm Haynes and Boone to conduct an independent inquiry. As news spreads about the allegations, minister allies are distancing themselves. The Church of the Highlands in Birmingham, Alabama, accepted Morris' resignation as a long-time overseer. The King's University, whose partnership with Gateway once recognized Morris as school chancellor, has removed him from its website on June 18. On June 18, Desta Television Network announced they had cleared all of Morris's programming from its broadcasting schedule. Much of the separation for Morris is expected, but a public statement by Life Outreach International, an organization Morris saved in the past when it was known as the James Robinson Evangelistic Association, is stirring confusion. Recently, until recently, the organization was unaware of the specific details surrounding why Morris had stepped down from full-time ministry. According to the statement, it said, Morris joined JREA in the late 1980s and only as a call center director. Morris' duties did not inclu include public speaking, nor was James Robinson involved in professional counseling or formal restoration to ministry for Robert Morris, it said. But as a newspaper clipping and an archive of Robert Morris' evangelistic ministries cloud that narrative, a 1982 Wrongview Morning Journal article suggests Morris was more than just a call center supervisor, saying Robinson and Morris were joining forces despite Life Outreach International's claim that Morris didn't join JREA until the late 80s. The article says Morris was invited to join JREA as an associate evangelist in December 1981. Just 10 months after Morris said he first gave his life to Christ and a year after leaving the drug scene. They gave this guy a ministry after 10 months being a pastor? What about the word like do not give an elder to a new convert? But I continue. Minister Walsh contacted Life Outreach and received a statement that read in part, and I quote, The human resources team at Life Outreach International Former James Robinson Evangelistic Association, JRWA, has scourged digital and archived personal records and spoken with previous employees and supervisors to better establish a timeline of Robert Morris' employment and roles. The statement said, Morris was an, and I quote, associate evangelist, close quote, from January 14, 1982 through May 31, 1982. On June 21, Life Outreach published a video titled, James Robinson corrects the record. Seated next to his wife, Esoram Robinson began by acknowledging Morris's dash. Since Morris admitted of moral failure, people have been asking questions about my relationship with Robert. Close quote. Robert Morris said, Robinson said, I would like to set the record straight. Robinson refuted allegations that he was present. He was present during one of the Morris's visits to Cremesha family home in 1987 and said he did not know the victim's age. Robinson then displayed a paper with a letterhead from Cremesha's attorney, Boz Tashvijan, confirming Cremesha's acknowledgement that Robinson was not present during the visit. While the letter removes Robinson from accusation that he accompanied Morris to Cremesha's child home, the video does not address the discrepancies between Life Outreach International later and archived articles. Kremesha explains her reservations about Gateway's path forward in a public statement released on June 18, in which she quoted a tweet from Chid Vision. Just days ago, the Gateway elders released a statement saying, since the resolution of the 35-year-old matter, there have been no other moral failures. Now that they have allegedly just learned that he was being untruthful, why limit the investigation to his conduct between 1982 and 1987? Why not expand it to his entire tenure at Gateway Church? Also, why have they retained a law firm that specializes in crisis management? 
In its statement, Gateway requested prayers for all those affected, including Kremesha, her family, the Morris family, Gateway member staff, and others. This piece origi originally appeared at Ministry Watch. All right. So, there is a problem, okay? Because James Robinson, we already did a live, guys, on the video, right? He came out and actually showed the letter, okay? That he was not, uh, he wasn't there when this incident uh, happened, which uh, Cindy Kremenshaw agreed. But the issue is, Robert Mo uh, James Robinson was just not present when at the Cindy Kremenshaw's house. But when these things were happening in Cindy's life, Robert Morris was in good standing order doing ministry with James Robinson. Which I think that needs to be straightened up because there has been a confusion. So it is true that uh, Robert Morris was in ministry with James Robinson all along while he was doing what he was doing. Okay? And these people, you know, they've done their homework and it, it, it says as much. So, to my knowledge, uh, uh, James has not, uh, James Robinson has not issued any statement to acknowledge this. And then they're just going to go ask for people, right? I grant 1982, no internet, you know, archival paperwork, they might not have it. You know, so I get it. Everybody right now is running, is distancing themselves from uh, Robert Morris, understandably so. But what is not in dispute James, uh, Robert Morris was given to be a pastor, whatever, evangelist, 10 months after he came to Christ. That should not have been the case. And this happened in 1982 in May. The incident also happened in 1982 uh, in December. So you can, the timeline uh, matches that he was involved with uh, uh, James Robinson Ministries. He's not to blame what, uh, what Robert Morris was doing, right? But when James Robinson distances himself that he had nothing to do with it, like, just like, no, no, no. There was some connections over here that needs to be further investigated, okay? So those are the things that uh, we can look. I'm just going to leave those links in the description. That way you guys can take a look at your uh, own convenience, okay? So now... All lies will be exposed. That's all. <laughs>